barrels are made, it's a very uh, complex process, but it's a very artisanal process at the same time. Um, and that's one of the things that's, uh, that's great about using the barrels to age the wine, because there's a very much a human element, just kind of like winemaking, there's a human element in guiding nature to get what you want from the wine. There's also a similar thing with barrel making. You know, the barrels start off as, uh, as oak trees. In our case, we only buy French oak, so oak trees in France. There's many different forests with different microclimates that, where the trees grow differently, the grains are different depending on where uh, the, the trees are grown and also within the same tree, within the same log, depending on where you, where you take your wood from, the grain's gonna be different. And the grain is important because that's what, uh, the bigger the grain, the more air you get in, the smaller the grain, the less, and so on. But it's a, it's a very complex process because you start with a tree, you bring the tree to a mill, and you take just a small portion of that tree to, to produce the barrels. So there's a, a big portion of the tree that goes to furniture production and, and other uses. Then you, you, you produce your staves at the mill, and the staves are stacked on pallets, and they're stored outdoors for at least two years. And that's called, that's the seasoning period. So while it's seasoning, there are things that are coming out of the, of the oak that maybe are a little bit unpleasant, some astringency and things like that. But being exposed to the elements, also gives it some kind of flavor as well. So this goes back again to the natural portion part of it. Depending on where the cooperage is, if it's in Bordeaux, the weather is a little bit different and also the maybe the fauna that might grow on, on the staves than for example Burgundy where it's the weather is maybe a little bit more continental, more cold in the winter, etc. Then after that it's a matter of how the coopers make the barrels. So they, hatch, they actually have people making the barrels. It's not all machines. Of course, they do use machines for uh, certain aspects of it. For example, you know, jigsaws and what and whatnot to cut the staves. And then after that, it's an actual person that's assembling and forming the shape of the barrel. And uh, in most places, traditional cooperage, they use fire to bend the wood. And this fire, it's the toast. A lot of it is the toast level that we end up selecting as winemakers for our barrels. So, if you leave it on the flame for a long time, it could be a heavy toast barrel. If you leave it on there for a short period of time, a light toast barrel. And if you leave it in there for an intermediate time, it's medium. But the, uh, there's no parameter that tells you medium toast is this amount of minutes, heavy toast is that amount of minutes. And because there's many people involved in the process, even within the same cooperage, you know, person A might do medium toast for 15 minutes, person B for 16 minutes. And so there's a little bit of variation in there. The barrels are never exactly the same one to the other. And I think that's what brings a lot of interesting uh, complexities to the wine. The fact that your expectation is that the, the average is gonna be this, a medium toast barrel from the center of France with this type of grain. But you know that within that population, there's a little bit of a var variability, and that's what makes the wine a little bit more interesting because it's not just all clean cut one type.